So let me tell you what I'm doing. That's sort of a something that kind of is an outgrowth, kind of an outgrowth of uh, Sissy Strut by the Meters. Um, and so I'm, I'm on a C harp. That was just that was just improvised. That was just like improvising on a groove. But let me see if I can show you kind of what I was doing, where it came from, and uh, maybe that'll give you something new to play. So obviously I've got a little bit of reverb. I've got amplified harp, but I start off with the three draw. A little bit of four draw in there and it's bent, so I'm going right. Wah, 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 three, th three, three, two on the draw. I'm going to start with that. And then I'm going. Now, what's easy to miss there is that I'm actually going down to the one draw very briefly, kind of a grace note. Actually, I'm not going down there, I'm coughing. I'm coughing as a prelude to two draw bend, whole step bend, to two draw, to three draw without a bend really, to two draw. So, well maybe I sort of was going down to the one, I'm kind of coughing. fun stuff. So I'm going to one draw, two draw, whole step in, two draw, three draw with a little blue third, pulling it down a little bit to two draw. Then the interesting move is up to four blow, four draw. And then an easy roll off on the two. That four note thing is a very common thing in the blues. So. take the rhythmic motif that I've established and I'm going to move it around see what else could I do let's say I start somewhere different so instead of I go starting on the 2-5 draw to 1-4 draw what can I do if I start there instead of how about that what am I doing there can you tell I'm actually using all tongue blocking and I'm going 3 6 blow, 2 5 draw, 1 4 draw, and then 1 4 blow, 1 4 draw. Now that there I'm just spinning out a permutation and what I'll tell you is that the more you do this sort of thing, the more you begin to feel where the licks want to go, right? And, but you're always going to potentially make mistakes. I think it's important. You, you, the only way to get to where you can actually just improvise freely and have a wide palette of stuff is if you actually have made all the mistakes that's possible to make and made them repeatedly and then stopped and said, okay, I'll try that again. And then eventually you got your, your first serve and your second serve. Eventually you can kind of stick within the stuff that you know and then reach out sometimes to try to nail that first serve, try to do something a little bit maybe where there's a percentage chance you're going to miss it. Um, and I do that all the time. That's the way you push this stuff out. So let's, let's see if I can just permutate a little bit and uh, that's what I was doing. Anyway, now you know the rest of the story. And, and by the way, always start off doing the thing, the, the sort of basic thing that you know, and then move outward into the stuff that's maybe a little different. tell right away in myself is that when I'm doing all the things I just did I was pushing too hard to try to innovate 
So don't think you have to keep doing new things. In fact, it's really powerful sometimes to just keep on doing the same thing and, and maybe make or make tiny variations on it. And then you build up, I mean, that's, that's the gospel influence. That's the get the feeling and go with it influence. And eventually you'll trust the feeling to tell you when it's time to move on to the, the next variation. So what I was doing there, if you go back and you replay it, is I was, I was going for my head. I was saying, I've got to do something new this time. I've got to do something new this time. And that's never the right place to make music from. Anyway, I'm just going to play a little bit more, and that's it. I hope you had fun this afternoon. <laughs> Bye-bye. See you down the road.